And they are now in their second innings. One John is the down team are out on the field here for the first time in a North Ireland semi-final since 1981 and the cheer that they got from their supporters will be something to surely hearten them as they face the challenge of Kerry this afternoon. Massive support down from down for the day. Why wouldn't there on such a special day for them? But Kerry too will have their welcome you can be sure when they come out on the pitch because it's their first appearance in a semi-final since 1986. Remember that as well. But joining me in the presentation box to look forward to this big game is Paddy Cullen. Paddy, you're very welcome. Thank you. A great cheer for Don. Yeah, a great cheer. Um, memories of Newcastle during the league when we beat them by nine points. You know, <laughs> now they're in the All Ireland yes, semi final. Yes. Uh, but it's great for them. It's great. They have great support here. And it's great to see the, the black and, and red flags flying there. It's great. I'm looking forward to it. Well, the chair that's gone up again, Paddy, is again from the Down supporters as their team come down here towards us at the Hill 16 end. And a mass of black and red colour all around uh, Croke Park. Now, always traditionally Kerry people don't travel as much with semi-finals. In years past, they didn't have to because they were always expecting yeah. to be in the final. Mind you, there is a reasonable Kerry support here today as well. I met a lot, an awful lot of people up from Kerry yesterday uh, who've come because it's been five years since they were here. Yeah, I think it's different now because it's a brand new Kerry team. Team. the era of you know the great Kerry team as such is gone so they're now expected to see you know the young crop coming up again to to make another great Kerry team God help us <laughs> well there might be a great Dublin team there to challenge them as well in the years ahead Paddy. we are a great Dublin team <laughs> <laughs> all right Paddy you, you know you mentioned the great team of the past and there are one or two of those guys of course still on the team particularly as it was Pat Spillane, Jack O'Shea, Charlie Nelligan uh, and Golan to a lesser extent Tom Spillane but I suppose if you were to pick somebody of the four and here they come and there's Jack and Tom after him as the Kerry team comes to their support. Well I think it's a great day for Pat Spillane, it has to be, uh, you know he's, he's into a brand new cauldron all together now and he's yeah. going to enjoy every second of it. He must have thought indeed Paddy that he would never see an occasion like this because when Cork started to dominate in Munster in 1987 I'm sure somebody like Pat wouldn't have expected to be back here again. Well he's a great character insofar as you know an awful lot of people don't know him. Yes. I've been down in his area a few times and uh, you know he's been plugging away and always dreaming. That's I mean right. he's a bit of a dreamer as well. well he's, got, he's got a gym out of the back of the house where he <laughs> trains privately. He does actually. Really? And really works on that knee because it's given him such a problem. There he is. You know the thing I love about Pat Spillane I think I admire him more than any other footballer. Probably. One of the reasons is you know he tells you that he, he shuns publicity and he doesn't really like all that side of it and he loves it. He loves these occasions. He lives for Croke Park. Well, He's another public, and I mean, all those guys are the same, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> he loves it, I know. He just won't admit it. That's all. <laughs> right, Paddy, let's consider Kerry's chances in this final. Now, it's, it's hard to know how to read their form. They were magnificent against Cork. They were a little bit uh, more unsure in the Munster final against Limerick. What do you think of this present Kerry side? Yeah, it's very difficult to know because, again, going back to the league, and people say the league doesn't matter, but it, it does matter. You know, we gave them a fair chance in the league. Maybe they learned by it. But then they took the All-Ireland champion, so what can you say? Yeah. You know, today is a day of reckoning for both teams. I think the big problem is going to be uh, both sets of backs. Both sets of forwards are very good. Mm -hmm. So it'll be really resting on forwards, and we'll see how the backs are going to go. Yeah, Kerry have Tom Spillane, of course, now back in the side again, back at full back. A player of his calibre must mean enough for that to that Absolutely, yeah. and the experience of it and, and the coolness under pressure, because uh, they did have a problem there with all due respects. But uh, I think he's going to make a big difference, a settling effect on their back line. How the down backs are going to fare, I don't know. I don't know. You have Jack O'Shea and those lads up front, Spillane, and, you know, it's going to be tough up there. Well, Paddy, as the opposing teams have their kick around before they go to the main action of the afternoon, we take another commercial break, but do stay with us. The All Ireland semi final coming up after that. and the sun has come out again to bless us on this All-Ireland semi-final day. Kerry and Down, their first meeting in an All-Ireland semi-final since 1968. Joining me in the presentation box at the moment, apart from Paddy Cullen, is Donald O'Grady, who was watching that uh, minor game. Donald, looking forward to this senior match, the Down team. An exceptional set of forwards if they're allowed to get into their stride. Well, I think even going back to the 60s, Michael, the they were always very stylish. They were a great team to watch, and going back to the early 60s when they won the all, the all Ireland there, Harry Darty, Jim McCartan, they were all players with style and class. And Mickey Linden and, and Jim McCartan, I suppose, James McCartan in the yeah. two corners, two very classy, pacey, speedy players. But I think today, Kerry will have trouble with them. But 
Well, it depends on basically the type of ball that they get played in from their midfield and their half back. It all depends on how Kerry can work a midfield and how their half forwards can work the stymie they don't have back line. And if, if they can get, we say, not allow the down centre fielder and half backs to play good ball in, the, well, that's half the job done. Joel, before we go to our commentary of the match, briefly from both of you, a prediction on the outcome? Yeah, very hard, really. I mean, the thing is, we, we don't know what the respective provincial campaigns Kerry came out once to no, but I mean, We'll just say, historically, maybe you might go for Dom. Paddy? I didn't think he was going to go for anybody. I'll go for <laughs> Kerry. <laughs> well, just to balance things up then here in the presentation box, I think I stayed neutral myself for this one. Let's go to our commentary then of the All-Ireland semi-final, Kerry and Down. Let's join Colin O'Rourke and Jer Canning. And it's a splendid setting, as you'll gather here. A crowd near to 30,000, I imagine. And you've mentioned already the great Down support that's here this afternoon down come to Croke Park with a glowing reputation and it's hardly a surprise that they retain the same 15 as that which soundly beat Donegal in the Ulster final. Backbone by Paddy O'Rourke at centre half back. The selectors once again up for a Barry Breen, Eamon Burns midfield pairing. Their main attacking weapons have been Mickey Linden outstanding in the Ulster Championship and Ross Carr the converted defender who's teased and tormented the best up north. So as they go on parade Kerry are pleased to welcome back Tom Spillane to what looked a highly porous defence against Limerick. And in the reshuffle, Kieran Colhan moves to corner back with Sean Burke starting at right half, while impressive newcomer John Cronin joins stalwarts Jack O'Shea and Pat Spillane at half forward. And any loose marking or indiscipline by Down may well be penalised by the assured kicking of Morris Fitzgerald. And Morris Fitzgerald is there in that colourful setting. There was a suggestion he might not play because he was down with a heavy cold during the week. Connie Murphy has an ankle injury, but you'll hear all these kinds of stories in the build-up to a big match that various players are not quite fit and able to take their place. But uh, rest assured, both sides unchanged from the selections made earlier in the week. Well, Colm O'Rourke, we're watching Pat Spillane there as part of that uh, exciting and colourful parade and what a great performer he's been right down through the years. Uh, Pat Spillane, I, I would consider the best forward in Gaelic football over the last 15 years and it's great to see him back in Crow Park again and of course it gives great heart to a young fella like me to see somebody like him uh, playing in the semi-final. There's uh, two, uh, two ex-teenagers, Colm O'Rourke and Pat Spillane. Paddy O'Rourke, the down captain, leading what has been a very impressive side throughout the Ulster campaign. And uh, they have the weight of expectation resting heavily upon their shoulders this afternoon. Impressive victories against Derry and Donegal has resulted in their enjoying, and enjoying is the word, the mantle of favouritism this afternoon. Young and old are here, and that looks like a down supporter. And Uwa Pete McGrath, Pete McGrath is the uh, down manager. And whenever the northern sides come down here to Croke Park, it always seems to me they bring their own bit of colour. I remember the sights in the past few years of uh, Tyrone here in 86, and I remember Armagh back in 1977. The Brazilian team must be around somewhere, but there's a Brazilian flag in there. Well, why not? We had some leash fans yesterday with, uh, I think it was an Italian Novanto flag. Just to remind you that there is more than one team in this match. Kerry, of course, back in the All-Ireland Series for the first time since 1986. Impressive winners against Cork in Killarney, but uh, showing just a pale shadow of that form against Limerick in the Munster final. I think that is a tribute, at least in part, to a very impressive performance by Limerick. Kerry today figuring in a 69th All-Ireland semi-final. They've won 48 of those and held their opponents goalless on 31 occasions. It's Down's 11th time to contest the semi-final. They've won three, lost seven of the previous ten. Many, many young faces in there. It's Connie Murphy walking out of picture. be among the most enthusiastic fans we've had here for a semi-final for many many years mm -hmm. 
So a terrific setting. 20 degrees Celsius, the scoreboard indicated. It'll be a lot hotter once this match gets underway and that left knee of Pat Spillane hoping to stand the test of time. So after an impressive build-up, let's hope now that the match lives up to its billing as Paddy O'Rourke has the final words of advice for his team from the now traditional huddle. Paddy O'Rourke will lead the karaoke singing, I'm sure, as uh, Charlie Nelligan makes his way back. Ambrose O'Donovan there is facing us. And I'm sure Jack O'Shea will have a word or two. That's Mickey Linden, who was voted man of the series by viewers of the BBC programme, the championship following a terrific uh, Ulster campaign. There's certainly a great pace and tight control which allows him to run at defenders and the Kerry defence in particular this afternoon is going to come under the microscope and people will be examining and seeing whether or not the selectors have got the positional switch is right. How will Tom Spillane play against uh, Peter Whitnell this afternoon? Ross Carr, once a defender, once a midfielder, now standing like the others for our own Levian. As Down win themselves the first free and Barry Breen the one who'll take it, chipping it forward. Tom Spillane racing forward with uh, Peter Whitnell. Whitmiller played here a couple of years ago in the London Colours in a junior final against Mead. Tipped away. And fed on from Jason McCartan to Peter Whitmill. Taken to ground, however. And Stephen Stack wonders why the free was given. Should have been pretty obvious. Bad mistake by Tom Spillane. Should have kicked that sideline ball long, especially as he had the wind with him, but put his own man under pressure and gives an easy point to settle down at the start. So this then to settle the down team, Ross Carr will be the free taker. He'll take most of the frees from the right hand side, kicking them with the left boot and Gary Mason will do the opposite on the other side. That's crept in neatly. And down enjoy the lead. Roughly going back for a bit, have a quick word with the umpire back there. Something he may, he may have spotted, and he's racing across now to have a word with uh, maybe Kieran Culhan. <laughs> Culhan is playing right half back, marking Gary Mason. So Connie Murphy left corner back, Sean Burke centre back. And the two wing backs, Colhan and Nix. Eamon Burns. Paddy O'Rourke here. Driving it forward towards Whitnell. He's trying to keep that uh, movement alive. Greg Blaney. An electric atmosphere in Croke Park as he plays it inside. It's cut out by Stephen Stack. Tom Spillan, the kick into the centre towards his brother Pat. That's Brendan McKiernan there going across, marking the shoulder by Eamon Burns. A little pile-up developing and the referee signalling that it's going to be a free in for Kerry. Eamon Burns, the one who is operating in the centre of the field alongside Barry Breen. Kieran Culhan operating at right half, the free taker. Good, long, lengthy ball down towards Nola Mahoney, who's moved inside there, but nobody able to contain it. Kerry have obviously decided that uh, Mickey Linden is the danger man because putting back Connie Murphy is robbing the centre of one of their best players from the Munster final. It's a position that Connie Murphy has played in before. I think in fact he won an all-star playing in that position. As Nix plays it down, Conor Deegan, the fullback, cutting it out ahead there of Morris Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald, a highly valued member of the Scarry team. They surely need his kicking strength. Burns 
against Jack O'Shea. Fed forward to DJ Kane. And the race across there by Gary Mason and Kieran Culham. Taken to the unmarked Pat Spillane. Belting it highly and hopefully put outside and wide. The second wide in for Kerry. It's a rapidly taken sideline ball down to uh, Pat Spillane. And from these positions in the past, Pat Spillane invariably kicked points, but he hasn't been scoring as much in this year's championship as before, and he puts it outside the right-hand post. Jack O'Shea has moved in from left half forward in towards the midfield. Blaney to Mason. Down looking for another score. On to Mickey Linden. He's got great pace. Carrying it right into the heart of the Kerry defence. A little chip, however, it's outside and wide. That was a very well-created move by Mickey Linden. He really had the beating of the Kerry defence. Yes, and we see the reason why they put Connie Murphy out on him, but he slipped Connie Murphy very easily, and uh, he should have stuck it over the bar, but uh, I think it was Tom Spillane coming out fast and put him off. So Charlie Nelligan's kick out towards Nola Mahoney in the middle. Collected well. Fed onto his partner, Ambrose O'Donovan. He was looking outside him towards Morgan Nix, but that's James McCartan nipping in there. On towards the middle of the second door, and that's Blaney. Oh, it's come off the crossbar from a great pass from Mickey Linden to Greg Blaney. A terrific shot by Greg Blaney. Down are putting a lot of pressure on the Kerry backs, and Amber O'Donovan gets caught in possession. When Greg Blaney gets inside the challenge of Tom Spillane, he had another man inside with him and uh, should have put it away from that distance and very fortunate let off for Kerry. So just one point on the scoreboard so far, that from a free by Ross Carr. Six minutes gone. Pat Spillane feeding it on there. Or rather, Timmy Fleming, this is Pat Spillane. Trying to go around the man in the corner there, Paul Higgins. Holding it up well. By Dennehy. Back to Jack O'Shea. Gathered brilliantly by the goalkeeper, Neil Collins. Super catch. Greg Blaney once again taking up a very intelligent position. McKiernan. Cut out here by Tom Spillane, but they're applying the pressure early and on. Often on the carry backs. Linden again, trying to make amends for the one that went off the post a little while ago. Timmy Fleming, wearing number 15, but way back in a left corner back position. Nola Mahoney can't cut it out. It's gone to Mason. Support from Barry Breen. Tom Spillane having difficulty containing Whitnell, and it's on towards Linden, and he's taken down, and it's a penalty. A penalty for down. What a dramatic start to this match. No question about it, Colm, I think. Uh, down forwards causing all sorts of problems with the carry backs, and the ball comes in. Uh, Tom Spillane just gets there to punch, doesn't get a clean punch. Uh, and then when it breaks inside, it's a race, and of course, Linden is the fastest man around, and he just gets there a fraction in front of Charlie Nelligan, and Charlie takes him out of a definite penalty. This from behind the, or from the other angle here. Yes, but the ball breaks inside, and of course, the pace of the down forwards means that Mickey Linden is able to get in faster than anybody else, and even though Charlie Nelligan is just out, he's just a fraction late and takes the man. So, Mickey Linden... Placing the ball in the eighth minute of the first half. Charlie on his goal line. Well, they already look like they've settled down well, this down team. This would really settle down the nerves. Referee just getting everybody back the requisite distance. Linden keeping his concentration, continuing to look at the goal. He's put it wide. Mickey Linden and Charlie Nelligan smiles. A release of tension, certainly.
And that's a bad blow for Down. Mickey Linden is normally a very reliable penalty taker, but now only kicks it wide, but a long way wide. And uh, it's a real let off for Kerry. Down have had them pre under pressure for 10 minutes, but uh, or have only one score on the board for all the pressure they have had on the Kerry defence. The history of the All Ireland series is, I'm afraid, littered with Ulster teams who've come here, got penalties, and missed them. No, the Mahoney. A let off for Kerry. Respond quickly. John Cronin plays it inside towards Morris Fitzgerald. Can they score at the other end? They have. No. Just kept out somehow. Still pressing forward. Jack O'Shea. Pat Spillan. Well, that was a let off for down. Now it's Timmy Fleming. Belting in. Held with some difficulty and lost. Off the post again. Morris Fitzgerald was out of luck. That's Pau Dennehy, and the referee signalling that it's going to be a free out for Down, who were in trouble twice in that last couple of attacks. Ooh, Neil Collins with a touch of the jitters. An amazing series of let-offs for uh, Down. First of all, Morris Fitzgerald gets through, loses control, but flicks the ball as Neil Collins comes out to him, hits the bar, Neil Collins gets his hand to it and up against the crossbar, a lucky let-off. Gary Mason kicking from the sideline. James McCarthy got a steal inside. It comes back to Whitnell trying to set up the chance for Linda. It was well marked. This is Whitnell, and that's a goal at last. A beautifully created, beautifully taken goal by Peter Whitnell. Ten minutes gone. He didn't score in the Ulster final, but he's made his presence well and truly felt. What a super goal. Initially faded onto Linda, who was well, really well marked. The goal that has been threatening for a long time has finally arrived. Uh, well played by uh, Peter Whitnell inside, but gets the rebound and with his left foot puts it away. Not as well known as the other two members of that full forward line, but still capable of scoring. A dramatic opening to this game. Timmy Fleming. Kerry yet to score, remember. Morris Fitzgerald. There against Conor Deegan. Free going in there to uh, ensure that the free kick can be taken. A sliding challenge. And Fitzgerald, of course, was uh, down with a bout of the flu in the middle of the past week, so uh, hopefully he's fully recovered. This shows the versatility of Morris Fitzgerald as a free kicker, kicking with his left foot, even though he normally kicks with his right. Down off the post. Paspalan in the follow-up action has put it over the bar for Kerry's first point. And it's taken the Grand Master himself, Paspalan, to record that score. Well, these spectators have seen the wood and the woodwork at both ends, crossbar and post struck so far. Six foot two inch tall, Neil Collins. Jack O'Shea touching it down towards Timmy Fleming. John Kelly is the down man inside towards Roscar. Down with the free. Morgan Nix is warned by referee Tommy Howard. Towards Greg Blaney. Just looking up to see what the options are. One of them is Mickey Linden pulling away to the right. Burns has come racing through on his inside. This is Eamon Burns. Against the other midfielder, Nola Mahoney. Right on the end line to Whitnell, looking for goal number two. Close down. And finally, it's easy for Charlie Nelligan to pick it up. Sean Burke. Well, that carry defence was well and truly tested against Limerick, and it's been tested again this afternoon. A uh, good down forward line. Ross Carr taking the free very quickly. Cross to DJ Kane, who's moved up from left half. Pumping it in, but putting it wide. Down with two wides, Kerry with three. Of course, uh, Kerry are playing with a significant wind advantage at the moment, so if uh, Down can keep this pace up to half time, they'd be happy enough to be in front playing against the wind. Seems to me the breeze is about the same as it was yesterday, Column, for that uh, Leinster final. 
Yes, and it's always a bigger advantage close to the railway goal. Up near the canal goal, the, the, the wall at the back tends to block it a bit. The 11th free kick in this match. Conor Deegan. Up to Paddy O'Rourke. On mark, so a chance to make a bit of headway. Linden freely moving away from the corner to Greg Blaney. Challenged by Burke. The foul resulting in a down free kick. I think Kerry would be better off if they went back to uh, Connie Murphy, Mark and Greg Blaney and uh, maybe Sean Burke and Mickey Linden because uh, the way things are at the moment anyway, both of the players that were changed are getting a bit of a roasting from the down forward. So, as we mentioned earlier, from the left-hand side of the field, it's going to be the right-footed Gary Mason who will kick it. Down leading by three points already. Oh, once again, an attack of the jitters. It just looks a little bit nervous early on. Kerry leaving just two men in their full forward line at the moment. Boris Fitzgerald has been brought out to a right half forward position. So Kerry then depended upon John Cronin and Pa Dennehy up front. Poor kick by Nola Mahoney. Belted back in towards Mickey Linden. Well against Connie Murphy. Backup support coming from James McCartan if he wants to use him to his right. Still Linden getting free, chance for a score. And he's kicked a very nice one. First point of the match then for Mickey Linden. And even though Linden jumped for that ball with uh, the back, he was still the first man to get to the breaking ball afterwards and turn and kick it over with his left foot. Charlie Nelligan today playing in a 10th All-Ireland Football semi-final. <laughs> Gary Mason claiming that one. Again, Whitman making a good run across towards his left-hand side. is followed over there by Tom Spillan. He's supported by Stephen Stack. Somehow gathered by DJ Kane, who slipped initially. Connie Murphy can't hold it, but uh, he was pushing. So Mickey Linden wins himself the free. Well, so many down teams have come to Croke Park for the semi-final, and Ulster teams generally with uh, big reputations, great expectations as well on them, but uh, this afternoon, down justifying that uh, degree of favouritism so far. We've only got 17 minutes of play. Ross Carr kicked the first point of the match. This is about 22 metres out. He's put it wide. Remember, he kicked nine points in the replay of the Ulster semi-final against uh, Derry. Wasn't quite at his best against Danny Gall. And the switch that Colm O'Rourke was uh, talking about, I think, is being affected because Connie Murphy is being brought back to the half line. And he's now gone out to mark Gary Mason. And they've moved uh, Kieran Culhane back. And Vicky O'Sullivan is told, off you go, by Tommy Howard. So the smiling Charlie Nelligan. Watching his defence being uh, restructured somewhat to meet the down challenge. Jack O'Shea racing for it with DJ Kane. Quick look up to see what's on. How Denny had moved out for it. The pressure being applied by Timmy Fleming all the way on Paddy O'Rourke. Needing assistance. Ooh. And that's gone wide. But it's going to be a free end because the referee had noted the push on the Kerry attacker. Just as uh, Paddy O'Rourke was in need of some support. Well, Timmy Fleming does a good job in putting uh, Paddy O'Rourke under pressure there. And uh, when the ball comes out, uh, I don't know what the free is for. 
because it, it does appear as if uh, the ball was picked off the ground. Morris Fitzgerald and they reach for the white flag for his first point of the afternoon. The first of what they hope will be many. So a goal separating the teams. Neil Collins here following in the footsteps of Pat Donham and Declan Murdoch. A very wild kick out with the wind not helping it, no doubt. At the other end, that's the new pairing now. Kieran Culhane against Mickey Linden. Chest high, it's taken there by Maurice Fitzgerald. Distributed nicely to Ambrose O'Donovan. Watched all the way in there by Pa Dennehy and John Cronin. Cronin against O'Rourke. And the four there is Paul Higgins. Dennehy, who was man of the match against Cork in the Munster semi final, winning Kerry the free. DJ Kane explaining that it was, from his point of view, a legitimate shoulder. One with a giant-sized heart, uh, the manager says, Mickey Sullivan. So Morris Fitzgerald once again, under the watchful gaze there of Pete McGrath, the down manager. Some jeering, as you'll gather, in the background from down supporters. But it doesn't seem to put Morris Fitzgerald off his concentration. Very assured kicking and a second point for Morris Fitzgerald just to peg back that gap and it's now nearly a two-point difference. Yes, and again, that unique skill that Morris Fitzgerald has of being able to kick freeze with both feet. And Rosa Donovan seeing that Nola Mahoney was in some difficulty went back that time, but it's down possession, picked off the ground. Picked up by Eamon Burns. Burns were a great traditional club there, Bryansford in County Down. Burns played in the club final back in 1971, I think, against East Kerry. Ooh, a high challenge. Greg Laney on towards Linden. Got Han in some difficulty. Stack trying to get goal side there. As it's fed back to Mickey Linden from uh, James McCartan. Comfortably gathered by Charlie Nilligan. Nola Mahoney, basketball star as well as Gaelic football star. Connie Murphy now in a changed role. Pat Spillan, taking the shoulder from uh, DJ Kane, getting by Craig Blaney. Gathered here by Barry Breen. Lofting it forward towards Mickey Linden once again. Been given a lot of space right now by Kieran Colhan. Able to set up chances, and it's taken neatly in his stride by DJ Kane. And the referee, I think, has whistled up, not allowing the advantage, as Tom Spillane acknowledges to referee Tommy Hart that it was his error. And if Tommy wants a little bit more action than that, he's going to issue the lecture. This is the move. Well, again, Mickey Linden is causing a lot of the problems there. Got a lot of space. DJ Kane got inside, and Tom Spillane took him out of it. Uh, it wasn't a particularly dangerous tackle. Tom Spillane then getting back just in front of Charlie Nelligan to offer his assistance. Ross Carr will be kicking. Missed one or two. And this one gets inside. Nice to deliver for his second point this afternoon. Once again, a goal separating the teams. Down having led from the outset of this game, which is now in its 23rd minute. switch that Kerry regularly make in the championship Jack O'Shea has gone in full forward and Morris Fitzgerald's come out it's a move they regularly make for uh, five or six minutes often with great profit Gary Mason against John Cronin making it forward nicely delivered from James McCartan on towards Eamon Burns scramble for possession Greg Blaney now Mason once again getting by the challenge there of Connie Murphy the industrious Mickey Linden into the centre. Nicely cut away, however, by Morgan Nix, who was showing the downman a little bit of it, and then flicked it away, but rather aimlessly. Looked very assured that time, Morgan Nix. No great accuracy in the final delivery. Now 
Bolted in field towards Greg Blaney, fisted away by Sean Burke towards the aforementioned Maurice Fitzgerald, back there now in front of his own 20-metre line. Followed by John Kelly, takes the free himself quickly to Timmy Fleming. It's a dead ringer for Pat Spillane. Jack O'Shea. He's intending to feed that one back, I think, for Maurice Fitzgerald, but opting to hold on instead. See what comes of it. What comes of it is going to be a down free for overcarrying. Disappointed look on the face of Jack O'Shea. Experienced campaigner. There is achieved so much through an illustrious career. Conor Deegan, the free taker, towards Mickey Linden. He's very much the target. They favour his corner at all times, if at all possible. Burke. Put under pressure, successfully. And it's going to be possession back with the Ulster champions. Who are leading the Munster champions by double scores at the moment. 1-3 three, to three points. Trying to nurse that one away from Peter Whitman, hoping it might go wide. Cole pokes it away only as far as Greg Blaney. Once again trying to look up and play it to a colleague inside as he continues his run. Linden's available. And that's tailed away. For a moment it looks like it was on his way, but the end, the breeze definitely carried it. And down injured, that's Greg Blaney, I think. Or is no, it's Peter Whitnell. Another very good chance of a point for down. Uh, Greg Blaney was being pulled by the jersey there when he gets it back to Mickey Linden he has a go with his left foot but the wind is carrying the ball across the canal goal and it goes wide there on the left hand side but Down can't be satisfied with the amount of scores they have considering they have been more or less totally in control of the first half Down's medical officer is Dr John Gribben so the ankle then receiving some attention the magic bottle as well being utilised by the physio who scored a goal in his debut, which was at Forky Cueve against Cork. There's the mark on the leg, a debut back last October. Where he also played soccer with Bangor and Chimney Corner, I think was on the uh, books of Cole Rain before uh, Pete McGrath signalled his intentions to include him in the down team. Mickey Ned, as they call him, Mickey Ned O'Sullivan, Kerry manager. I'm sure he's feeling the pressure that his team is feeling. Kane towards Greg Blaney transferred rapidly to DJ Kane a feature of the first half they don't hang about Pat Spillane a terrific interception and a fine run forward he's made a good 40 yards towards Jack O'Shea Jack transferring it back towards Ambrose O'Donovan Kerry needing a score keep neatly in touch and that they've got three men involved in a lovely attack and Ambrose O'Donovan acknowledging what a good move it was one of the best points of the game so far simple yet brilliantly executed. Uh, down overdoing the short passing a little bit, but it was an absolutely brilliant interception by Pat Spillane, and a great ball into Jack O'Shea, who was standing behind his man first, and then came for the short ball, give it back to Ambrose O'Donovan, and an easy time, a great time for Kerry to get. It means they're just two points between the teams. So as the sun once again makes its appearance here at Croke Park, Timmy Fleming attacking. Goes down by Ross Carr and Conor Deegan. Free kick. For the foul by Deegan. And it'll be Morris Fitzgerald who will take the free. So a chance now to show his versatility. With the right boot. Quite an ambitious kick. I wonder will he go for a point or up to lob it. And he's going for a point and he struck it superbly. One point is the margin. Morris Fitzgerald has got a third point from a free and the Kerry fans salute what is a magnificent kick. A huge distance out. And that's the position. Kerry very firmly on their way back thanks to the kicking skills of Morris Fitzgerald and the down defence will have to be more disciplined. They can ill afford to give away scoring chances with a player like Fitzgerald about. Connor there, Connor Deegan there, the down fullback in need of a drink of water from the magic bottle. 
Terry have dragged themselves back into the game with a couple of nice points and uh, there's a lesson for the down backs not to be fouling within 50 yards down making a change in their half back line Pat Spillane has been marked now by DJ Kane right in the centre and Paddy O'Rourke has gone across left half back Timmy Fleming punching it on towards Jack O'Shea who sneaked inside the fullback Conor Deegan a goal chance always oh, put it wide it was a terrific run by Jacko. Conor Deegan was beaten for pace ball came in here from Sean Burke and uh, the Kerry are going through a very good patch at the moment lands inside and is punched on there by Timmy Fleming right into the path of Jack O'Shea who's going straight through and uh, holds off Conor Deegan and from about 12 yards out puts it badly wide Kerry now fighting for the ball in midfield Nola Mahoney more influential at this stage taking the transferred pass back from Jack O'Shea blocked on brilliantly however by Gary Mason picked up here in the centre by Ambrose O'Donovan fed outside by Pat Spillane referee says play away the ambitious kick by Spillane going to the right tailing away to be Kerry's fifth wide of the first half equaling Downs tally so far so five minutes to go to half time an intriguing semi-final I'm sure they're enjoying it Kerry going through a period of dominance at the moment for a while there in the middle of the field you think Down had an extra man now it's Kerry's turn to seem to have men everywhere Barry Breen has that one fisted away by Nola Mahoney. Kerry opting to fist the ball down in midfield and they're good at picking up the loose play as it comes back now. Ooh, challenge there, a hefty challenge indeed. And Timmy Fleming, John Cronin wanted to take it quickly. Fleming certainly felt the effects of that hefty challenge. Member of last year's all-conquering con Kerry under-21 team. So Morris Fitzgerald has this chance to put the team's level. Very assured kicking once more. And so the sides are level with just about four minutes to go to half-time. Down who looked superior in the first 15 minutes have now largely surrendered possession in midfield. A problem area for them just now. Kerry taking their chances. Pisted away again by Nola Mahoney in midfield. Pat Salan getting the better of DJ Kane there, who has been marking him in that switch with Paddy O'Rourke going out to the wing. Conor Deegan, the fullback, gone across to take the line ball. And he reaches Sean Burke. Up to Jack O'Shea, who was unmarked momentarily. Transferred back to Morris Fitzgerald. Curry has not been in front of this game so far. Can this be the moment? It is. A fifth point for Morris Fitzgerald, the first from play. And Curry go into the lead by seven points to 1-3. The down fans, probably in a majority here at Croke Park, I'm sure rocked by the last few minutes. What's happened to their team, they're wondering. Conor Deegan badly caught there, about 30 yards away from Jack O'Shea when that ball came down. Even though Paddy O'Rourke, I could see him from here shouting at him to cover off. And it left for an easy point for Morris to serve. The referee at the other end of the field consulted his uh, two umpires. And going across now with the notebook to take the name of Kieran Colhan. So the Bally Longford player becomes the first man to be booked in what's been a very entertaining contest so far. Referee here used his umpires well yesterday. And Mickey Linden is also going to have his name included in the little black book. I'll just assume it's a little black book. So two names taken. And play can continue with a kick out from the opposite end. in what is now a sun-drenched Crow Park. Pat Spillane fetching magnificently. Really doing well against DJ Kane, as you said earlier, Colm O'Rourke. Yes, uh, a surprising move that to have DJ Kane on Pat Spillane. I would have assumed that uh, Paddy O'Rourke at centre-back would be a stronger man all round to uh, play on Pat Spillane. This free from 60 yards, too, is uh, very much within range for Morris Fitzgerald with the win. They lead by one, remember.
Has it got the distance? It had the distance, but uh, not quite the range. So just about a minute then to go to half time, and that's a reminder of the scoreline. Down, I'd imagine, will be hoping now to stay as close as possible. It's one point between them, will probably suit them with the breeze at their backs for the second half. And there was a jersey pull that time on DJ Kane, so it's going to be a free from where the ball lands. Greg Blaney taking it quickly towards Mickey Linden, losing his balance. Fodded away by Kieran Colhan. Kerry get the free. Sean Burke. Towards Jack O'Shea. Well, he was being held, the referee decides. Jack O'Shea now being marked by Conor Deegan. Carl Dennehy thought that he might be in with an opening that time. Paddy O'Rourke telling everybody just to cool it down. So Kerry have a free kick as the game ticks towards injury time in the first half. And this can put two points between the teams. And uh, down for all the football they have played, now find themselves uh, going in at the break a couple of points behind probably with this three when they could have been uh, four or five points up with the number of goal chances that they created. Curled in. Does it curl in sufficiently? No, it's gone wide. A costly miss. And when you consider that the wind is quite an influential one and it'll be behind and supporting down for the second half, they really needed more than one point, you feel, at half-time. So is that one-point lead going to be sufficient? Neil Collins kicks out at the end of the first half, which was largely entertaining, featuring a goal for Peter Whitnell after ten minutes. Down certainly looked a superior force at that stage, but through the kicking skills of Morris Fitzgerald, they've come back with a vengeance, Kerry. Five points in all has been his tally at the end of the first half, which Kerry go in leading by one. It's Kerry seven points, down 1-3. Yes, and we're still a long way from knowing who's going to be into the All-Ireland final out of this particular match. We'll be discussing that first half of John Lugredi and Paddy Cullen right after the commercial break. Don't go away. Support must be said are being entertained by the young children of the national schools from all over the country and giving an exhibition of the skills that we are sure will grace Croke Park again at some stage in the future when these players are all a little bit older. Well, let's look back then on that first half with Paddy Cullen and with Donald O'Grady, our two guests in the studio here. Paddy, an interesting first half to say the very, very least of it. Yeah, interesting. Plenty of woodwork stuff. <laughs> but, uh, down played copybook football, they were tight at the back, the hunting the breaks in the middle of the field, getting the ball in quick to the forwards. Everything was perfect, except they didn't put it on the scoreboard. Uh, Kerry were in sixes and sevens at the back. Um, Greg Blaney was doing an awful lot of damage. Then Kerry got on top. I think Down lost a bit of concentration, and Kerry have come back into it. Then there is a strong breeze there, which we can't forget about either. But I think Down, you know, should have, you know, seven points more on the board, yeah. missing a penalty as well. So. You know, it's going to be, as you say, it's not, it's nobody's game and it's everybody's game. So who's going to win? I don't know. I still say Kerry. All right, John Lugrady, let's have a look at this goal for Down because they threatened this for so long. Eventually it did come for them. Yeah, Peter Whitnell punched the ball in and Mickey Linden, lo lovely tap back, and he stuck away in the corner. Great yeah. goal. And at that stage, Down were flying and it looked as if they were going to run all over Kerry, but things didn't turn out that way. Yeah, it was no surprise to us, uh, mind you, it has to be said, that Down were going to be like this in attack because we made this point before the match that if the forwards got the supply of ball, that they certainly have the talent to do it. Well, they're full forward and it's very busy. They're very fast off the mark and they were giving the Kerry rear guard a terrible time. But they stopped all of a sudden. The half-backs had to come up, began to play a short ball and really, they should have pumped everything into the full forward in Eiffel. But they began to stop Taylor on the middle and bit by bit, as Paddy said, Kerry came back into it. Well, Paddy, as you know from experience yourself, down through the years, Kerry don't lie down to anybody. Mind you, they needed something to lift them in the game at that stage. And they got it from Morris Fitzgerald, who's scored some fabulous points. He has, yeah. This he, one in particular. This one is brilliant. I mean, he's, he's up against the wire. Talk about going to the wire. This is a brilliant point. Five yards from the sideline. And the thing the that struck us when he was taking that uh, ball, that 
there was there was no fluke about this. I mean, he looked up, he saw those posts, he wanted that point, yeah. and by golly, he went and got he's, it. He's very accurate both left and right, but that was a crucial point at a crucial time of the game, and that's that's the winning and losing the games. I'm talking about Morris Fitzgerald, he has missed a few over the last few minutes, but it must be pointed out that Morris has gone into this game feeling ill because he's had a virus during the week which will affect him. Yeah, probably will, but he's doing all right. I wish I had a virus and play like that. He's doing well. <laughs> Donald, we've, we've talked about the first half, but let's take a look at the second half and what we might expect in this. Now, Down have seen a situation where they've played most of the football and are a point down, so where do they go from here? Well, I think that they'll have to tighten up a bit at the back, follow any little silly mistakes. They give away four or five kind of silly frees, and they had little things like the full back taking line by the Tigers, like they did at that stage. Well, it's an intriguing situation that we look forward to in the second half of that match. It's a second half that you will see after. Yeah, still no sign of the team is back out for the second half here at Croke Park. So obviously both sides making full use of the time available to them at half time to discuss their tactics for the second half and figure it all out. A great buzz, Paddy Cullen, going around the ground here at yeah. the moment amongst the supporters, wondering what's, what to expect in this yeah. second half. Surely Kerry will look at a situation now where they've got a pasting early in this game. They've steadied themselves to lead by a point at half-time, so they must fancy their chances as they come back out. Yeah, I think Kerry will settle down a bit better now. Uh, I still think Down have the ability, mm -hmm. but Kerry have the, an awful lot more experience, I think, in those key men and the key areas. And they've settled and they believe now they can win. Donald, by contrast, Down now perhaps will have a little bit of, of a doubt over their own ability going into the second half. But if they can steady themselves again, I mean, they could win this game by nine or ten points. Well, I think what you said there really, Michael, it, it hits the nail on the head because they got a lot of ball and they didn't take that extra little second to steady themselves, which would have been crucial. Now, it depends on what they said at half time, but if the manager can set them down and tell them, take their time and look at the situations and play the good ball rather than hitting the ball away fast as they did in the first half, they could be in there. Very well, and I, I expect him to do well in the second half. Donald, we just saw two men going to a shot there, Liam Austin and Ambrose. So Donovan, uh, or Ambrose Rogers, I should say, two men that Down will may call on in the second half if they are needed. There is a sub on the Kerry team. Let's get uh, information about that as we go back to Jer Canning and Colm O'Rourke. We're looking at Jack O'Connell, who's been introduced by... Ker oh, not Jack O'Connell, it's Dom O'Line, I should say. Dom O'Line, who's been introduced, number 19 by uh, Kerry for this second half from Castle Island Desmond's a marking job required obviously and an interested spectator my colleague Michael O'Hare sports commentator of course and I think Michael in fact made his debut as a commentator doing an All-Ireland football semi-final I think a match in Mullingar good to see him here Reminder then of the score at the start of the second half. Kerry seven points, down 1-3. Just checking to see who the player on off is. As the second half starts with Dommy line there in the Kerry defence. Ambrose O'Donovan towards Jack O'Shea. I wonder did uh, Connie Murphy come out for the second half? Was uh, we look around their defence? Don't see him. Connie had an ankle injury going into this game, and he may very well be the one who's been replaced by Dom Line. Dom Line. So it's Morris Fitzgerald. He's uh, blowing across diagonally, if anything, at this stage. From right to left as he faces up to the kick. Quite allowing for that breeze, it seems. So Kerry's eighth wide in all. So the midfield exchanges bound to be interesting as Ambrose O'Donovan kicks it across towards Timmy Fleming's wing away from Brendan McKinnon, however. Greg Laney, trying to get down left-footed. Held out there by Tom Spillane, picked up by Stephen Stack, making progress there against James McCartan. Fisted out by DJ Kane, who seemed to injure himself. This was reaching over the head of Pat Spillane that time. Now Barry Breen, a probing ball inside towards Mickey Linden. It's fisted away from Mickey Linden, and it's gone out 
for uh, the first 45 of the match for Down. And Kieran Colhan doesn't look uh, the fittest of players just at the moment. Uh, not requiring attention. Gary Mason ready to take this uh, 45. James McCartan just doing a little bit of pushing. I think uh, he may have been pushed himself prior to that. Stephen Stack was the player he was uh, having the little word with. Mason. Oh, just get inside the left-hand post. No. So one wide apiece. Attention, by the way, at the moment has been given to DJ Kane right in the middle of the field. He really felt that shoulder after reached in over Pat Spillane to punch uh, one of the last Kerry attacks away. Pete McGraw with a concerned look at his face. DJ Kane, who's a PE teacher in Lagan College, what I'm told is the first uh, officially integrated college in Northern Ireland. So the down fans then giving vent to their emotions, trying to cheer on their team to what they hope will be a place in this year's All-Ireland Football Final. Charlie Nelligan, what looks like being a very tight and highly competitive second half, let's hope it's a great one. Mason. Down towards Mickey Linden, who's moved in from the right-hand side. Gathered, however. And Kieran Calhoun ready to clear his line, so perhaps he'll leave it for Charlie Nelligan to kick from the ground. Having to get to grips, of course, with the threat posed by Mickey Linden. Well, in Ulster down, of course, isolated their full forward line and put in a lot of long balls, which they should be able to do with the wind here. O'Mahony, securely taken. Misdirected with the left boot. John Kelly watched it all the way. McCartan just managing to touch it down to the inrushing Greg Blaney. An opening here. Whitmer. Linden's available. Comes finally off the legs of Calhoun. Charlie Nelligan winning the race. Mickey Linden showing his pace to just get there. And in the end, the umpire decides it goes off Charlie Nelligan. But uh, the referee, in any case, has signaled that there was a push in the back by Mickey Linden on Charlie Nelligan, and the outcome's going to be a free out for Kerry. Again, a goal chance for down, which they have spurned, and that's about the fifth they've had in this match. Listed down by Barry Breen. He's off the legs of Donald Ryan. McCartan, against Stack. And he's a tenacious player. It runs on nicely for Whitnell, the goal scorer. Outside for Gary Mason, and after all that hard work, they finally produce a score. McCartan has set it up, Whitman involved as well, and the final kick coming in from Mason. So the sides level once more. And James McCartan showing how dangerous he is, because when he gets running at a defence, it's very hard to stop. Peter Whitman puts it out to Gary Mason, and he taps it over. But uh, the wind seems to have got a bit, have got a quite a bit stronger uh, at the interval, and the ball has now got dry, so it'll be uh, much easier for forwards. They reach for possession. I think it was Lyon who prodded that one on, but only as far as DJ Kane is feeling a right leg just now. Meanwhile, James McCartan trying to get the measure of Pat Spillane. Well, would you believe pulling his leg or Tom Spillane? And Tom and James McCartan don't look the happiest. Hopefully Tommy Howard realising that a good talking will be quite sufficient. An all-star from last year when he really burst on the scene in exciting fashion. Down reached the league final last year, remember, against Meath. Pat Spillane held well by John Cronin. Full-back from the Kerry Minor team 12 months ago. Pat Spillane saw that one come off the legs of Barry Green. It's a good decision. 
Linesman was well positioned. Spillan kicks. Well, not the most distinguished kick he's made so far this afternoon. Paul Higgins will kick it in towards Gary Mason. Nicely fetched back there, Burke. And Sean Burke wins the free for Kerry. Mason making no attempt to uh, play it. 